tandems are slid back. Green APU is about to kick on. It just did. Keep us nice and cool. And we will wait to get loaded, guys. Get a little shut eye, but hopefully they're quick about it. And we will see you hopefully running down 95 for a little bit tonight. They weren't joking about this place being quick. Once he hit the uh, trailer, it was about, I don't know, 25 minutes and we were loaded. So awesome. A little yard jockey coming through. He said, meet me in the office for paperwork. So it's a quick load. Let's get to the paperwork and get on the road. Paperwork and seal. 30 seconds after I walked into the office. So if you get independent beverages or caught beverages out of uh, Charlotte, they are definitely quick. The reviews were correct. It looks like we got a bunch of soda or something. Okay, let's close this thing up. I don't know if you can see them or not, but there's some uh, red blinking lights off to the right. That's Carowinds. Uh, I've never been, but it's like a Magic Mountain uh, amusement park for South Charlotte. So we passed downtown Charlotte back there on the left about five minutes ago, and it's gorgeous at night. Well lit up skyline. And then right behind all these trees is those roller coasters. Can't really see them, so. We're on 77. It's pretty rare that I take 77. Yeah, Carowinds is right there to the right. You can see a couple little, uh, you can see the coasters and stuff. Looks pretty fun. Like extreme coasters. Um, yeah, I've never really taken 77 because if I'm ever getting back home to Charlotte or anywhere around here or picking up a delivery, it's really, usually a short run. I've not really taken a lot from Charlotte to Columbia or nothing. But uh, if something like this pops up for a good run, I'll dead head over there and, and, and this kind of shoots me back behind my house. My house is straight off to the right, about 80 miles from here. <laughs> so I'm going to come back behind it and shoot back down to Columbia, South Carolina, and then I'll be on my normal route, come down uh See, now we're in South Carolina. We just got right back into it, just south of Charlotte. It's kind of crazy how the state lines go, but now we're back in South Carolina on the uh, northeast side of it, kind of. Rock Hill area, South Carolina. So we'll head on down here and catch back on to Columbia and then shoot back out uh, towards Charleston and hit the 95 again, southbound. We've ran about 50 miles loaded. Uh, it's a heavy load, so I'm just going to check these hubs, go over everything before we get really boogie in. Uh, but I do remember this exit having a QT that was pretty easy uh, easy on and off. So we'll stop here, refresh. And yeah, there's a, a 1 9 and a QT. I remember this like, I probably haven't been here. I don't know if I've ever been here in the W9. I've been here in the Volvo for sure, my truck before this truck, but pretty sure not the W9. Got Taco Bell. Got a double turn lane and uh, let's wait for this light. So yeah, let's check out these hubs and uh, wash our windshield. Keep going. 101, 111. That's the power axle though. Pretty full up here tonight. This was our one that almost put us out to 120, 117, 118, 120. Okay, can't ask for more consistent than that. Okay, let's get into QT, refresh and wash this windshield. Now, just driving right over the scale. There you go. Okay. If you're wondering what I'm doing, this is a thermal, uh, what is it? Infrared thermal thermometer. They're selling at Harbor Freight or Lowe's or Home Depot. I think they're like 30 bucks, 25 bucks. So nice to have just to see how your hubs are doing. Plastic's probably not going to be very cold. But hey, a warm skirt. What's the motor looking like? 88 degrees. All right. Yeah, get one of these. Nice to have. Just keep in your door. 45 mile an hour zone through here. Um, but here is our 95. We 
finally made the seaboard. And I'm not tired. It's not even, it's almost 12.30. And I think I'm just gonna keep rolling through South Carolina to maybe get down into Georgia uh, before we shut it down. I have pretty much over 24 hours till I have to deliver, but I need a 10 hour reset somewhere in there. So I don't wanna have to have a, a reset my clock. I wanna reset it when I'm at Haines City, when I'm at Aldi. So I need to get there at least 10 hours before the uh, drop, if that makes sense. Or eight and two, I can use split up your hours. People ask, how do you do that? Check with your ELD. You have to be in sleep or birth mode. So you can't just like go off duty eight hours, go uh, on duty, off duty, whatever. Personal conveyance, you have to be sleeper mode. Like so, sleep mode, truck connected, nothing like you can't leave. You're not supposed to leave the truck, you're supposed to be getting rest. That's what it's for. But, uh, that's, I think that might be one thing you want to check with your, your ELD provider and see how they do it if they're off of that, or you might have to click something inside your uh, settings to enable that, I don't know. We're on, uh, we have plenty of time, we're on 95 now, uh, we're under 400 miles from our drop, and we have a lot of time to get there, so I'm not tired, we'll keep rocking it till I feel any kind of sense of tiredness, and then I will we'll shut it down, reset for seven or eight hours, and I can't, I mean, I don't sleep six or seven hours usually is what I was a good amount of sleep for me and when I'm home so 10 hours off usually use a couple hours winding down and get a good six seven some people like eight hours of sleep so if you can get that that's awesome but for me I'm a little bit less sleep but I just give you guys an update we are hitting 95 we're heading making good time the truck's doing great and uh, yeah let's rock down here and get to Georgia at least and see how we feel we are done for the evening. We are gonna turn on our green APU and get these, there's little like buttons. That's how these go on those windows to cover them up. And uh, that one's already on. Well, let's get some shut eye and we'll see you in the morning. Good morning, Georgia, almost Florida. We are in Brunswick. So let's go do something in honor of the wife, T-Dubs. So I will think we will get some Starbucks in her honor. My wife's name is T-Dubs, guys. If you're new to the channel, new to the channel. And we are in Brunswick, Georgia, just South Savannah, almost in the state line of Florida. Oh yeah, the Starbucks. This is t -Dub's favorite truck stop when we're going to a Florida vacation. Mainly because of that, and for me because they always have, they always seem to find, they always have a parking spot, so. At least one or two. Okay, we got our coffee in her honor. Let's get on the road. There's another car hauler getting way empty, and then there is a bunch of Buicks. I didn't think Bukes came from overseas, or maybe they're going overseas. Um, but this is a huge hub for car hauling. A lot of the foreign cars, I believe, come off this port. That's why you saw all those Mercedes over there. And um, that must be a big old port of cars somewhere around here. I think Savannah has some too, but down here in Brunswick, there's like a hub of, of trucks pulling cars. So we're getting into that industry. It's not a bad area. Car pulling might be for you. Who knows? Got Landstar moving in next door. And I'm gonna show you something that happened last night that uh, is a little frustrating, but it's part trucking. Some of you might not notice, but a little crease right there. Those two marks. Somebody tagged my bumper last night. I didn't even feel it, but that is unfortunate. I bent it back with my arm and I also put a towel against it and rubbed it against that uh, cinder block right there and it came out pretty good, but unfortunate, but that stuff happens out here. There's one of those car haulers again. Um, there is a huge pothole back there. Check it out right on the left. My goodness.
this. At least they put a cone out there for people, because at nighttime that could be, uh, I want to have three cones. We're getting that filled in. strips in the ground right here. Let off your throttle. It'll give them a good reading. Let it off. Cruise through. And see if the light changes to bring you in or it just says stay, keep rolling. And it says stay, keep rolling. That's what we're going to do. All right. But yeah, that's a, just a little word of wise. A lot of people in Tennessee, because it's 30 miles an hour, sometimes it's 25, sometimes it's 45, 40. So just stay with that speed and it, it calibrates to their readings. Pretty quiet over here, just one drop trailer. Uh, well, what's going on? One truck is chilling out and one drop trailer. Everybody's at lunch or something. I don't know. Somebody was in there. There's one car. One car. One person working. All right. Let's get down to uh, Daytona. We're going to probably, uh, I think of where I want to eat lunch at. I don't know. I used to love going to this little, um, I would do it if I had still had the little restaurant out there, but they have a restaurant that's on the beach off exit 305 and it closed. Wasn't enough people going there or something, but it had some really good pasta salad, pretty good food menu, nice people. Uh, but it has a lot of potential for building an upstairs patio that had a great look at the water, but they did not keep that open. So. Exit 305, there's a huge Flying J, I believe. I don't know if it's a Flying J or a Pilot. Yeah, Flying J and Pilot are pretty much the same company, I believe, um, but either way. A lot of parking there. Great place to stop for, for the night if you're going all the way down to Miami and you're trying to just get as far as you can to reset your clock. But 305 has a, I think, six miles you can be out to the water. So it's a nice little place to stop and reset if you get a chance. There's a convenience store across the street. I think it's a Circle K. And you can just bobtail over there, block your trailer up at uh, that exit 305. There's one of the trucks on the left right there. There's a Volvo that went by with a gold stripe on it. That's the club car. That's where my Volvo came from. So every time I see that, it's a little nostalgia. The first thing I did was a uh, heat gun, peel that decal off. 
and then I took the whole DDF apart and cleaned the DDF filter and stuff, but brings back memories. Go back in my older videos, you'll see all that when I first bought that Volvo. And it was time, times are different, four years ago. But now they're, now we're W9 with a little crease in our bumper now. Oh yeah, same motor though. All right, stop rambling, get 305, figure out where we're gonna eat. Then down to Daytona. A little Coast Guard boat over there to the right, a couple twin motors. And a lot of rail right below below us. This uh, bridge goes over about one, two, three, four, ten train tracks. Lots of rail right here. But in Jacksonville, to our left, the uh, Jaguar Stadium. You can barely see it way out there to the left. If you're looking for it, you'll see a little glimpse of it. I've delivered kind of close to that sometimes. Uh, we're about to come around the bay and then shoot back down 95, and we'll be boogieing down to Daytona. Daytona. I don't know when bike week is again, but they just had a race there. I heard it had a little bit of rain, but it was a good race. Uh, we should have went to that, but just things changed, and definitely the freight's changed, and uh, we might hit Bristol now. That might be our first race for the boys to actually see NASCAR, even though Bristol, I've heard, is a very loud, very loud track, because it echoes around. It's a short track, but hey, they've been to monster trucks inside of a small coliseum, so I think they can handle a little bit of NASCAR if we have some earmuffs on them, so it'll be a good experience for them to see the rumble and all that kind of stuff. And I love watching uh, Cletus McFarlane. I, w I haven't watched any of the videos of footage of his event, but he just did an event. If you don't know who he is, he's that car and industry guy. He does a really cool build set of El Camino with some twin turbos out of the hood. <laughs> or uh, did the uh, Rocky Mountain Race Week. I mean, that's kind of where he got his channel to blow up from, but there's the bay to our left. You can't see it, but bridge is up for the trains and the water's looking calm this is Jacksonville yeah he's uh he did an event at Bristol I don't even know who won or anything I gotta catch up on some of that um but he had a thousand what is it the Bristol 1000 so 100 laps pretty cool and he had a bunch of other big youtubers out there like Goon Squad I love watching them I'm kind of formatting my son's channel around Goon Squad. I'm not so much body work. I'm not a body work guy. I want to do the, the rest of my stuff, but I kind of like a daily daily life of uh, messing with cars and what my boys are doing if they get into that. So I'm praying they do. They can do whatever they want in life, but that's just me giving them a little bit of a head start if they want to have their own channel. So if you do want to check it out, it's right here on the left, 3BB. I'm not in the middle. If you're only a car guy, I'm not, or a car girl, I'm not forcing you to do that, but if you like that kind of stuff, that's where they're at, and we hopefully will get their Trans Am fired up this month. Uh, just a couple more things, wiring and some fuel lines, and we should be able to push the key forward and see if it goes room, which is pretty cool. But right now, let's get through Jacksonville. It's about 3 p.m., so let's get back down to Orlando and fight some traffic. Daytona Beach, we made it. Stop right here. We have about four miles till we veer off on the four. But the time of day right now, uh, I'll be able to reset my clock easier, easy with a sleeper berth. Another two hours, so I'm not worried about a full ten hours when I get there. So I'm just gonna chill back here for a second because I don't want to go through Orlando uh, at 5 p.m. I'm sure, a lot of you other guys that uh, <laughs> run down to Orlando every now. There are other routes to get there. Um, save you some time, a lot more roads, that kind of stuff, but we're just going to take our same old Highway 4 and get off uh, just past Orlando and head south a little bit, and there's Haines City. Right now, let's get some food. So let's grab our QT cup and see what's up. Ah, oh, Florida, 93 degrees out here. Once you get past Daytona on Highway 4, there's not a lot of truck stops until you get to Orlando. So I said, let's go check out...
pretty cool drone shots, right? And that is uh, Daytona Speedway over that way that you saw when I came down by the Bucky sign. And then there's Daytona out there. <sighs> so there is a little place back here. Don't tell too many people about it. And I like to stay out of the way back there, but I don't stop here very often. Um, a lot of traffic going to, to good old Bucky's. Well, let's get inside Bucky's and get something to eat. I'm sure some of you guys will see something out of these clouds. Those two big ones right there look like smokestacks or something coming off of a truck. <laughs> Always the best cloud formations though, out here in Florida. Some crazy uh, hot and cold weather sometimes, but right now it's hot. They have bajillion pumps, but not semi-truck friendly. And as much ice as you, <clears throat> as you can carry. I think we're gonna get a brisket sandwich, or maybe, I like the, the burrito they gave me last time, it was real good. They have all kinds of merchandise, everything like, fire pits, smokers, whatever you need, and all the pellets to go with it. All right, and the smell you get when you walk in these doors, oh yeah. yeah. Order one, six, two. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's huge. Come check it out. This one's reversed. Normally the Coke machines are over there. fresh guys and then get back on the road probably give it an hour here and then we won't be too far away uh, to make that appointment and um, reset a clock and yeah don't bring t-dubs here <laughs> all right let's get some food so we got the chicken breeder today and one thing about Bucky's they don't have any outside seating or inside seating so I understand it, it's another smart business move because then you don't loiter. So, back to the truck and what kind of stuff did you see in those clouds, guys? Nice little Porsche. Blue blocker. All right, Bucky, we're out of here, buddy. Thanks for everything. Back in the truck and time to fire up. Also, check out justtrucking.shop. We definitely have a lot of apparel if we need a new hat or shirt. Why not grab one, help support the channel safetyauditprep.com guys give them a check out too they have a great free video on how to start your authority i know trucking's a little bit um inconsistent right now but hey if you're thinking about it right now is a great time to buy some equipment and we will be at this truck show right here with safety audit prep doing some meet and greets and hanging out and just talking about the product they are great with all the compliance issues you're going to have or need and your audit will come within your first year. That's what their, their whole thing is about, safety audit prep, because you will have an audit as a new authority your first year. Everyone does, different states do different ways. But check them out and uh, check out Just Trucking Dot Shop and let's get down to Orlando. And as we're leaving, Schneider just pulled in here. They know what's up. If you do come here, I don't recommend sleeping here. Just uh, if you need to get some good food, stop by real quick and get on out so someone else can get in. Give him a little wave. He's got a little monkey in the door. It's pretty cool. I like this guy from Columbia, or, uh, Canada. He's been here the whole time. Another flatbed guy, if you saw the video, he left. Um, I wouldn't just loiter here. And also, if you're gonna stay here, get your trailer a little bit straighter, maybe. So we can get past it, but no worries. Uh, Bucky's has some great food, but they are not semi-truck friendly. And they're definitely W9 not friendly. If you see on these signs right here, the picture of the truck they chose, the W9. <laughs> Keep your W9s out of here. Walk your dogs, hang out, and get some good food. We are going to have a real pretty sunset if the clouds stay like that, but um, that building over there on the left, I forget the name of it. It's, I believe, vacant still. The contractor had it and built it and never finished it. Uh, kind of thought that maybe that top portion that's, that's facing, so it looks like the south southwest a bit should have been facing towards the sunset <laughs> but whatever um yeah it's always been since i can remember since i've been driving since i've been coming down to orlando because i never drove to orlando before until i moved to the south and started driving a truck 
with that building uh, since I can remember. Like there's, looks like there's lights on in it. Or maybe that's just a reflection. I think there's lights down the center of it. But yeah, I know you guys have some comments on that, who owns it and what it is, but for some reason it reminds me of Nakatomi Plaza, like die hard, I don't know why. <laughs> I have no idea, but it has power. It has lights in it. Just nobody's using it. Parking garage at the bottom. Who knows? We're coming in to downtown Orlando. Real pretty sunset. We have water down there to the right. We're right over water right now. And more water over there. Pretty little place in Orlando. Uh, the highway looks like it's getting a little bit better. Those two lighter lanes to your left are the express lanes and they are definitely uh, working good. So that's what they were kind of fixing forever. This place was under construction. And I don't think they're 100% done yet, but they definitely have made it a little bit better. So, if you miss Orlando, if you're from here, been here before, here it is again in early September. Yeah, the expressway really came out right, came out nice. And the Orlando Magic Arena is right up here on the right. I think it's called the Amway. Not 100%. This is like the heart of downtown right here. It looks like. I've never spent an extended period of time in Orlando, but I have been to Disney World two times. It looks like we'll be going for the third time. Uh, and the reason Disney World is a big thing for me is I grew up about a mile from Disneyland in, in LA. And we had season passes. And my mom kind of used it as daycare in, uh, in our early years of uh, elementary school. So she would just say, go ahead. And we would, we'd do that park like the back of our hand. Sure, we didn't have enough money. Like, we didn't have she packed us lunches. Like, we didn't have all the money to spend on all that stuff. But it was a great place to just go play on Tom Sawyer's Island. There's the arena right there on the right. And um, have some fun. So we were there when Splash Mountain first opened up. That's when this happened. Splash Mountain wasn't even a thing, and when it first opened, it was all the craze, and we would go there early in the morning and ride on it. It was cool. I actually got stuck on it for about an hour, right where you come into the big uh, ferry boat, the big, uh, what's it called, with the thing in the back that spins, like the water wheel kind of thing, where they keep singing over and over again. We were stuck there for like 45 minutes to an hour, and then they finally came and got us out of the um, log and like walked us down through the set of that little singing thing and put us uh, down the back steps, like something, something broke, I don't know what happened, but that was my memory I always have, it was like a seven or eight year old. But cool, it was cool, but that, that's where it comes back to my, um, yeah, that expressway is real nice, there's only a couple cars on it, but it really opens up the construction now. So that's where it comes from, Disney World, now that we live on this side of the US, um, it doesn't make sense to drive or fly all the way into Disneyland, and Disneyland's a lot smaller than Disney World also. So all the resorts and the different, uh, hotels and stuff you can stay out of here is pretty cool so we try to stay at the same one every time we'll stay at the same one for kyle and god willing that we can do it again next year uh we'll hopefully get a load back down here like this one and uh like kyle and experience disney world too and see the floats and the parade and the fireworks and all that stuff case had a blast cash had a blast my, my two older sons and kylan's coming up uh it'll be four in january so one more year from january we'll probably come back down here again god willing it's all going the same and that's where the Disney World uh, correlation comes from, where I want to take them there all. Because five years old, you kind of have memories. I have memories when I, I was like four and a half, almost five. I remember going to kindergarten. I remember not fitting into desks. I was so tall. My feet, my knees hit the bottom of the desk. <laughs> now, I remember that part of it. I remember it being pretty fun, just like coloring and stuff. Uh, but I don't remember, remember vaguely my teacher. I knew where the room was or that kind of stuff. But. So being five years old and going to Disney World for your first time, I hope that's one of their first memories that they hold on to for the rest of their life kind of thing. So that's where it comes from. At Disney World, it's getting a little rain. It's off to the right over there. Well, that looks a little menacing. Looks like it clears up to the right, but we're going straight ahead. There is a pilot up here on the left, so I will stop there. Go to sleep for five hours, uh, wake up 1.30 morning and it's right across the way so there's a walmart right down here too big distribution center but the aldi is a late night delivery place so they're pretty orchestrated about it i hope i don't have to deal with a big lumber fee or anything like that because this is a coyote load um they're not as easy to get lumber they always reimburse but like to get it up front where they give you an express code it's not as easy as it is with like convoy or uber um 
Jamie Hunt is also not easy. Uh, NCH Robinson's kind of non-existent unless it's the middle of the day and you can call your broker, but after three or four o'clock of your broker's time, you're, you're probably not getting any response. So either way, got some clouds, gonna get some sleep, deliver, and then have our clock reset and run straight back up to Savannah, pick up our usual backhaul, got it again for $800. Uh, it's really nice till these loads run out, then I'll have to start looking again. But that 800 for a straight through, I'll take that all day. Off the truck the same day and right back home. And then just searching for another one shooting down here. It looks like that's going to be my MO for a while um, until we're ready to start getting a little bit better going to PA or going anywhere else until they need us. Uh, once they need the trucks as an owner operator, as a one truck operation, or as a small fleet, uh, I just sit there until they need me. And this load was needed to go. So I took it and I'm happy to help and move some stuff. But for the amount of prices, the amount of maintenance and costs I have for this truck, um, I really got to kind of know your worth and keep it right where it needs to be. And uh, yeah. All right, let's get to this pilot. Close this video out. And we made it to the pilot. We got the last spot. A car hauler just moved out of here. So I was like, sweet. We'll go ahead and uh, shut it down for the night. Turn on our green APU. Get a good night's sleep. About five or six hours. Uh, go unload. Lay back down while they're unloading. Hopefully pay a lumper fee and uh, see you guys tomorrow. God bless you. Let's pray for a good night and safe travels tomorrow. Roll easy out there, guys.